In today's show, we're going to use Power Apps to build a shopping cart. And remember, shopping carts aren't just for online bookstores. So we're going to look at how to connect galleries and forms and some actions, do some formatting stuff. We're just going to use it to put a whole story together so you guys can get a better idea how these apps actually work together. But first, before we do any of that, here's our intro. <laughs> Hi, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras. Those guys. In today's show, we're going to build a shopping cart. We're going to do this for two reasons, right? One is it just gives us a chance to talk about multiple screens, how to get data to flow between, how to connect it. And we're going to use all of this with a SharePoint back end because that seems to be the most popular right now so that you can just do this, right? I've had clients who've used shopping carts not to sell things, but in order to you know, pull a bunch of documents together, send those off to have a package made or to you know, assign new work or things like that. So there's a lot of uses for this shopping cart mentality that we're gonna work through today. Uh, the other reason is, you probably don't know this, but I teach a class at the University of Cincinnati, go Bearcats, and as part of that class, my students are doing projects and they needed to understand how to do shopping carts a little better. I demoed it in class, kinda of got the blank look, so now we're gonna put it in video so they can see it. So this is like a win-win video, cool? All right, well, let's just dive in by switching over here to my desktop. All right, so over here on my desktop, I'm going to open up my browser. And real quick, let's just show you the shopping cart that we're going to build roughly. All right, so here I've got just a nice little uh, set of data. I'm pulling this all out of SharePoint. And so we're going to talk about how to like format these icons. Uh, this is kind of an interesting field, format the number. And so then when we go in, we're going to say type of shirt. Boom. And so then this is a form up here. And then these are just independent controls. So I can choose my size, so large, and then quantity of three, you can see my total updated. We're gonna add that to the cart. We'll jump down here to the green guy. Uh, we'll just take the default there. And we use this little icon here to jump over. And so here you can see I already had some things in my cart. Um, but so I've got 204 items in my cart and um, what I can do then is I can either clear out my cart, probably not what I want, or I can place an order. So the name of the person, let's not make that, let's make it Shane. So if we place an order for Shane, then we jump over to our SharePoint site and go to orders. You'll see that Shane has an order for 204, right? So the idea here is that A, this shopping cart's really ugly, but that's okay. We're not worried about that. At the very end, I'll show you a prettier version of this. Uh, but then B, Really though, it's all the mechanics. So by the time we get through all those things, you'll mechanically know how to do all the things. So if you want to put more data in, or maybe you want to have place order send an email instead of a uh, you know put an item in SharePoint, right? All types of different options. I think my students are all putting it in Excel. So you know whatever works, all right? So let's just jump over here and let's build ourselves an app. So we'll click on apps. Let's say create an app. Well, I'll be thankful I cut out all the 15 seconds of waiting here. So then we got blank and we'll do a tablet layout just because it gives us more real estate, makes it easier for us, right? And you could start with a SharePoint list, but if you started with a SharePoint list, then it's always on the skinnier format and it gives you a bunch of screens and we don't want those. So I like to start with blank, okay? So we're gonna say skip. And the first thing we're gonna do is insert a gallery. So we'll do a vertical gallery. And for the vertical gallery here, then we're gonna hit the drop down, say add a data source. We're gonna choose SharePoint. We'll choose my SharePoint site. And then down here, I have a list called shirts. We'll say connect. And while that's connecting, I will show you back over here that the shirts list, right? I have a title, so this is actually the type of shirt, the price, whether or not it's long sleeve, and this is a true false field that's manifesting itself as yes, no right now, and then the color, okay? So we'll go back to our app. It should be ready for us. It is, and we're going to just choose the title and subtitle layout because that kind of gets the card formatted. We're about to mess with that thing a bunch though. So we'll change the this to be title and we'll change subtitle to be price. All right, so that gets us a foundation. So the first thing I like to do, I'm gonna drag this guy over here and drag this guy over here. And I'm gonna insert an icon way down here at the bottom, unfortunately. All my icons I want for this are at the bottom for whatever reason, make this bigger. And so in reality, right, you probably want an image of the item in the shopping cart, but I didn't want to cover getting images out of either Excel files, which is what uh, we demoed in class, or pulling them off OneDrive or any of that. I didn't want to get lost on that tangent. So for today, we're going to do it a simpler way. 
If you leave me comments below, though, I'm happy to make a video in the future on making this an image we pull from somewhere. So what we're going to do with this little guy is we're going to take him, and his color right now is that. But what we're going to do is we're going to use the color value function. And we're going to take the color field for the item, right? And just like that, we got red, blue, yellow, green. And if you looked over here, you'd see red, blue, oh, orange, green. Sorry, I cut my eyesight's not very good apparently. But that gives us a, at least a visual indicator of what's in the shopping cart. So a red shirt for my stick figure guy. So then we're going to just fix a couple of these things, right? So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to say type of shirt. Oh, put space in there though. Colon like that. All right, so that's how we make that look nicer. Stop. I did it again. I forgot to tell you to save, right? I spent 30, the next 30 minutes building this awesome app for you, but I don't ever remind you to save it. And we know that autosave doesn't run until you've saved it the first time. So right now, go save your app, right? Click file and then click save. If you've already got an app named that, then just say, Shane saved me, just like that. And hit save. A few seconds later, you're brought here. You don't even need to mess with sharing the app or any of that. But then now what will happen is every two minutes, it'll auto save for you going forward. So you can't lose a whole bunch of work. And the way to check that, we hit file and then account. You can see this box right here, auto save, save changes every two minutes. So, all right, back to the show. For the price, we're gonna do two things in this field. So we're gonna say, um, call it price, why not? Like so. And then we could just show the price 22, but this is money. We wanna see money stuff, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take advantage of the text uh, function. And when the text function, what you can do is you can pass it a text value and then have it formatted. And there's different formatting options for this. Um, I am going to format as a number, but if you go and look up the text function, oh, I did not mean for that. Just like that, boom. Um, we are able to kind of set it, right? And so in US, this is my language, so your language might be different, but um, the settings might not be exactly the same, but if you look up the text function in the Power Apps documentation, it'll show you all the different cool formatting options you have available. But I thought that was pretty nice, right? A little, little work there, and now we got a nice little price. Um, so the other thing that I had in here was whether or not the shirt was long sleeved. So we're gonna insert a label. I'm gonna pull it over here. Now, if I do um, this item dot long sleeve, it just says true. Well, that doesn't work for me, right? I needed to say something better than that. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take advantage of uh, an if function. I'm gonna say if this item dot long sleeve, right? Cause it's a true or false value. So I don't have to do any if checking. So if it's true, this thing, if it's false, the other thing. So right now it's true because that's what's stored in there. Then we would say if it's true, then type the shirt is long sleeved. If it's false, type the short shirt is short sleeved. Just like that. And so here, if you look now, look, long sleeve, short sleeve, long sleeve, short sleeve, and that matches perfectly with our data of yes, no over here. Um, oh, wrong app. So that's just one of those little things I, it's worth noting. The other thing I'll point out here is you notice that like right here, I use this item dot long sleeve. You can do that and that makes it make a lot more sense for us. But as you get more advanced, you probably stop start dropping that off because long sleeve works exactly the same, right? Power Apps is smart. Power Apps knows you mean this item's dot long sleeve, but it lets you type this item because when we're learning, it's easier to have all that information like this item. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This particular row in my uh, data. Okay. So there you go. So we have a browse gallery screen. So we're going to change this and we'll just say, we'll call it the browse screen. Why not? Boom. And then we're also going to rename our gallery, right? You should get in the habit of renaming all your controls, but you know, in making these videos, it just makes them longer. So I only rename the ones we need to. So gallery um, browse. Now we'll call this gallery shirts. Okay. So that gets our first screen up and running. Yay us. Let's do a new screen. Blank one here, and we'll call this um, detail screen. All right. And so here on the detail screen, we're gonna kind of combine two different uh, concepts. So we have a form and we're gonna do it in display mode. And for our data source, we're gonna do shirts. All right, so after about 10 seconds, it pulled all that data in. Now to make it make more sense real quick, what you probably wanna do is you wanna go over here to item and change item to be what? It's gonna be gallery shirts dot selected. So whatever shirt that's selected, it got here. 
boom, there's our data. Now we're just going to prune it out a little bit. So title, price, long sleeve, color, those are probably the core ones. We'll see. Let's get rid of all the other guys. Oh, lots of clicking. I am going to change this to a four column layout so it kind of takes up a little more space, uh, but it's just wide. Okay, so that gets us that. Now, if you look at long sleeve, right now long sleeve is set to be a, uh, a toggle control. It's not what I wanted for this, so I changed this to be a view text. All right, so I think that'll all work for us. And now let's customize a couple of these. So for title, we're going to hit advanced over here and we're going to say unlock the changes because I want to change this to be yep, type of shirt. All right, for price, maybe we're going to unlock this guy. And what are we going to do with him? We're going to change this from parent.default to be, um, oh, let's get rid of all that. And we'll paste in our good old buddy text. And what is this? This is gallery shirts dot selected dot price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it. And then we're going to format it with oh, price, the thing that I have in the uh, clipboard, right? And so this will be the same for all of them. Okay, so we got type of shirt, price, boom. And right now, long sleeve is true. And so then what I would probably do here is, let's see, we'll do it slightly different this time. We'll unlock this one. And so right now we'll just do another if, but this time we'll say if, um, right, same thing, long sleeve. So if long sleeve is true, then we'll just say yes. And we're gonna say no. All right, and there's different ways to do it. The thing I want you to keep in mind is that you can use the data, you can do the ifs to format this the way you want. So maybe you want to do, if a uh, long sleeve is true, put a picture of a long sleeve shirt. If it's false, put a picture of a short sleeve shirt, right? You have those type of controls. So that's why I put an if here, and I use boring yes or no, but it's to get you thinking. You know, and then the last thing, just to remind you to think, unlock, and so then, I do this all the time. I'm gonna change the color of my red text to be color value and then color, All right? And I just like to do that because that reminds you that yes, the text is in red color. So when we come in around, if we did this for the blue shirt, the text would be in blue. Not something you're ever actually gonna do, but it gets you in that mindset of, uh, you know, changes you can make. All right, so I feel a lot better now, right? We got a nice little guy here, we'll kind of spread it out. So that shows them what they clicked on, but now we need to help them place an order with us. So we're going to do that with a couple of things. So the first thing we'll do is I'm going to add a label. And we're going to call this label just size. All right, just like that. And then we're going to insert a drop down. So controls and a drop down. And drag this underneath size. And we'll make it a little smaller. And so then for data and drop down, I don't think we've done this before. You can just type in what you want, right? So doom. We usually feed this out of another list but we can also just take advantage of our ability to type or sometimes my lack of ability to type, yeah, it happens. Okay, so that gives them a drop down where they can choose size. And then we also wanna let them choose quantity, right? I want them to buy lots of stuff from us. So we'll do another uh, label here. We'll grab this and we'll say quantity, quantity. I'll probably misspell quantity at some point in this video. So look forward to making fun of me for that. And then we're going to give them a slider to let them choose how many they want, right? Showing off our power app skills. We'll set the default to one. We'll, we'll be kind. We'll default to the one. But then you can set the min value. So the min value, oh, you can't order zero shirts for me. You can order one. But I'm also, I don't want to share too much with you. So the max number of shirts you can order is five. And then now that that's set, we'll go back up here to the quantity. And we're going to change this to say slider one dot value. All right, and so if we preview this real quick, we got a drop down with SMLX, and then we can slide in quantity. Ooh, pretty cool, huh? And then maybe the last thing we want to do is we'll create another label. And we're going to call this subtotal. I don't know, that's probably not the right name. And what we're going to do for that, though, we're going to say subtotal is slider1.value times, right, nothing complicated, just put in an asterisk, uh, slider one value times gallery shirts dot selected 
dot price. And so there you can see three shirts at 22. I'm not awesome at math, but that comes out to be 66 in my buck. Pretty cool. So that gives us, um, I think, a lot of what we want. We just need a button now to put this in our gallery. So let's grab a button, drag him over here. All right, we'll change the text for the button to add to cart. Add to cart, like so. And then the on select statement, this is where uh, we're going to type a bunch here. But what do we want to do? So when they want to add that, actually, I'm going to paste it in so you don't have to watch me type it all. But then we'll talk about what it is. Okay, so here's what I've done. Okay, so what do we want to do? We want to collect the shopping cart, right? So uh, this is put stuff into the shopping cart collection. We haven't declared it yet, so the first time you declare a collection, it's done. And remember, if collections are like, whoa, what's happening right now? There's a separate video that just does nothing but collections. So we're not going to go too deep. But so collect the shopping cart. We're going to set item type equals gallery shirts selected title, okay? Item cost, gallery shirts selected dot price. Item color is gallery shirt selected color. Nothing special yet. Order size is drop down one selected value. Yep, like that. Order quantity is slider one dot value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, right? We're just going to collect the data and put it into our collection. And then when we're done, right? That's uh, what the semicolon is. We're going to navigate back to the browse screen and we're going to use the screen transition to cover. Oh, I did. I had a typo, right? It's browser screen for whatever reason now. Okay. So that will all match up. So if we now hit play and preview this and we say add to cart, it brings us back over here. And if we want to, we can do view and collections and we can see that our data is in our collection. Very cool. Let's go back over to this screen. Now, when you're doing this, um, I will be honest with you, it takes me two or three tries of like building the whole app to figure out exactly what data I needed. So Either you could collect everything that's on the screen here, so that way you know you have it in the shopping cart, or you can just kind of keep working through iterations. That's what I end up doing, just kind of baby steps, because I don't want to over-collect. All right? So that gets us add to cart. Uh, one more last thing I want to do here is add a button. And so this button's going to be, um, we'll just call it back. But I never use the actual back function. I want I want to know where I'm going, so I'm going to say navigate to the browser screen. I wish I'd named that the right thing, but I didn't. I should fix it, but I won't. All right, so that gives us all the functionality here to place an order and browse through the items. Awesome, awesome. So then next up on our list, we'll minimize this guy, is we'll do a new screen, we'll do a blank screen, and we'll call this cart screen. Very creative name. And so here, we're gonna do a gallery, and in here is now shopping cart, yes! Make sure you've put something in the collection. It's a lot easier to work with this stuff when you have data. And so here I'm going to do title and subtitle. And the reason I always pick title and subtitle is it kind of formats this guy the way I want. Right? I can manipulate any of them to look the way I want, but title and subtitle is an easier place for me to jump off. So that's kind of what I usually do. And so then we'll just do, you can see we have different items here, but I want to do item type. And we'll do um, order size. So this shows us the data here. So it looks good in here. All right, I do not need this guy, I know. And so we'll change this to type of shirt real quick. Oh, we'll put our space in there though. Doop, doop. And our ampersand, right? So there's our type of shirt is a workout shirt. I need my semicolon or my colon. Um, so the same type of thing here. This would be size. Okay, and then we'll spin this guy down, make him smaller. We'll take this guy also, then I'm gonna copy him and paste another one in. And I did that so the formatting would be the, uh, the same. So size, and so then now we'll blow all that out though, and we'll do quantity. And that would be um, order quantity, like that. So there you go, so size, small, type, workout, and then we'll do, um, we'll paste in another one, so I'll just hit paste again, drag it over here, and so then we'll do a um, order subtotal. Probably not exactly what I did last time, but this is what uh, is on top of my mind right now, so that's what we're gonna do. Isn't it fun being me, just make up things as you go? 
And so what is this one, right? We don't know this one. We didn't store this one. I didn't store it on purpose because of what we're going to do in another video. But what we're going to do here is we're going to say we need to take order quantity and multiply it by item cost. I think like that should probably work. Oh, duh, this is not big enough. There we go. So order total like that. And then what I'd probably also want you to do is slap our friend text into here like so. And then what we do, we go to the end and then we'll copy this guy again because he works so well. Why would I read and type all this? Control copy, paste that right there. Boom. So then that gives us um, what we need, right? So let's do a couple more things here. Let's insert a label. And for this, we'll do name, right? This is the person who's going to be ordering our stuff. And then we'll insert a text input. And we'll let them put their name right here. And then we'll do another label. Right, and when you're pasting or you're creating these labels and other controls, right, you have to make sure that you're outside of the gallery. I don't want these to be inside the gallery. I don't want them repeating. I need just one instance of these. So don't uh, make that common mistake. Right, but then we could say order total. And then what is this going to be? This is going to be something new for, well, we've done it in other videos, but we're going to use sum, right? And so for sum, we're just going to say we want to sum um, shopping cart. And what do we want to sum in shopping cart? We want to sum uh, item cost times order quantity, right? So like that, and so we could do that. Oh, but I messed up order quantity, so like so. So that is right now is our order quantity. Um, but if we go back over here, let's go back to the browser screen. So let's say play, I'm going to the green shirts. Oh, we haven't made the work yet. Well, let's go into the green, let's go fix that. So what do we need to do here? When you click on the arrow, we need to navigate to the detail screen. Joop, joop, like so. And we'll hit play now. So now if we click on this, goes to the green shirt. Show Now notice the quantity was already set to three. Well, that's not our default, our default is one. Why is that? It's because this control hasn't been reset when we came back to the screen. So before we do this, let's go back here and let's change that. So what you can do is I'm gonna to go to um, my button, but when I navigate to the screen, before I navigate, I'm gonna say I wanna reset oh, slider one, like so. And then we also want to reset drop down one, oh, like that. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna set both of those controls back to their default value instead of the last item or last value that they had in there. So that one was a little boo-boo that I realized in the first iteration I made, I had. So, so now let's do this. So let's go to the green shirts. Ah, size of small, quantity is one, perfect. So we'll set large, we'll set this to two, we'll add those to the cart, and then we'll go to the blue shirts, right? Small and one again, yay. We'll make this one four, we'll add it to cart. Oh, and now we need a way to get to the cart. So let's go in here to our um, icons. Microsoft gives us a shopping cart, so I decided to embrace it. And so we're going to do that one. And when we click on that, we want to navigate to the cart screen and cover. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So hit play. So there we go. And so now you can see that all these add up to 168. Sorry. So that was a really long way of showing you, but fixed a bunch of little, uh, little things we need to do. But so now we have our order total is being displayed. Now in a future video, we can talk about how to edit the individual items here, but I've not included that functionality in today's. So we got a name field, we got an input field. So let's add a button. And let's add a button for place order. And then let's add another button. And we'll make this one for um, delete order. And so if they want to delete the order, then what we'll do is we'll say um, clear shopping carts. Boom. 
So that would delete out the collection, right? So if they delete the order, that would get rid of this whole thing. But if they place the order, then we need to go and do something. And so what we're going to do there is we want to update our SharePoint list like I did in the previous example. But before I can update my SharePoint list, I have to add that as a data source here. So what you want to do is you want to go to View, Data Sources, right? Shirt is there, but not Orders. So we'll Add, we'll choose SharePoint. We'll choose my SharePoint site. Remember, this SharePoint site doesn't have to be in the same place. One of the wonderful things about Power Apps that we had problems with, like an InfoPath and stuff, was connecting multiple SharePoint sites. This is just built in. So if this was in a whole different site collection, as long as you have permission, no problem. So then we'll go to the bottom down here. We'll go to Orders. We'll say Connect. All right, so that gives us our data source. And so we're going to go to Place Order. And so for this guy on Select, when you press that button, what do I want to do? I want to uh, collect, oddly enough, we're going to use the Collect function again. And our collection is going to be orders. And then now you just get to set specify the items. So we're going to say we want to set title, right? And title is, if we go back to orders over here, title is the name of this column. Order total is the name of this column. So we're going to say, all right, title equals um, text input one dot text. All right, so whatever they type in that green box, got it. And then we'll also do. Um, what did I say? Order total? Yep. Order total. Sorry, for this one, it's going to be uh, the same thing we used here in order total, right? So if we just grab this, and it's going to be our little sum function. So we'll put that right here. All right, just another great example of how you can embed it. And then we'll close curly braces and close the whole collect statement. And so we'll hit play for a little preview. We'll place our order. We'll cross our fingers. I didn't mess anything up. We'll go over here. We'll hit refresh. Oh, I didn't type anything in there, so we need to go fix that. Text input, but 168 got in here, so we're real close, real close. Oh, and so text input was my default uh, text, right? We don't want default text. Okay, so we'll just delete that. Now, a couple things to think about here, right? So this is working, this is doing what we want, but this would be great examples, right? And we've done this in other videos, so we're not going to recover it, um, but you know, you could do like a place order here and then have like a pop-up screen and say, are you sure? Or, you know, thank you for submitting your order or something of like that, right? Right now, place order doesn't do anything for my people. So you need to kind of work that out. Place order can also do anything you want. So whether it's writing to a SharePoint list or sending an email or uh, any of those type of things. Um, so let me show you real quick before you lose attention. So this is the crazy one I built. And so if you leave me comments below and say you want to see how I take what we have and just add all this branding to it, let me know. If you're like, nope, I get how you did this, no problem. But the one neat thing that's here is if you click on type of shirt, let's order this. So we'll say add three, two of those to the cart, boom, take me to my cart. So over here, I added the functionality. Oh, and I messed it up. But here, when the edit pencil shows up, you can then choose to change your orders. So we'll change those three, and we'll say boom. And so our cart total is now 66. Yahoo! And then if we edit again, you know, we can do uh, one. And so we're updating that. The other thing that we can do is if we go over here, let's add uh, the blue shirt. We'll add four of those. Add to cart. Take me to the cart. And so then if I go into that one and I change it to be zero, then it even deletes it out. So um, the reason I'm going to move all that to a separate video is I spend about a long time in there kind of working through all the if statements to make these different icons show up based on whether or not you've done the, um, what icon you've clicked, and then to remove the item if you've done zero, but uh, only update if you've not. So the other thing to think about, you know, like with place order down here, um, so I showed it to my wife and she was like, Hey, well, how do you, you know, how could they actually buy something? Well, in reality, you know, if you were well, well, elbow grease, right? Not something we're going to do in the video anytime soon, but you could send them out to somewhere like uh, Shopify or not Shopify, like uh, to Stripe or something like that and actually get them to an order screen. I mean, it's all possible. You know, Power Apps is pretty cool. So I wanted you guys to see that. Hopefully this helps you guys um, connect some different concepts. It helps you figure out kind of, you know, some different ideas because like I have said, I've built this for other customers not to buy stuff, but to browse SharePoint content and build up little bundles and packages and stuff. So cool, cool. All right, well, thanks and have a great day. Hey, it's me again. Just a reminder, if you don't mind, click the old subscribe button over here. That always helps me out. 
Or if you want to work together, you can always hit me up through the bold zebras. Or if really what you want is some more of these power app videos, which is probably what you want, then the playlist is somewhere on the screen here. All right, thanks. Have a great day.